Good morning. Receive these words of welcome as we gather. We come from all walks of life, from all corners of the city, from all perspectives, the rich and the poor, the struggling and the secure, the hopeful and the despairing, gay, straight, trans, questioning, liberal, conservative, moderate. We come in every color, ethnicity, ability, and nationality. And God has called each and all of us. And it is God who welcomes each of us as God's own beloved. As we gather in Thanksgiving, we offer what we have to give, our talents and our imperfections, our faith and our doubt, our hope and our hands, our time, presence, and our witness. Today especially, we offer our material wealth and our hearts and lives for God's work in the world. We thank God for the blessings in our lives and in the world, and we lift our voices in thanks and worship. Welcome this morning. If you're a guest with us, thank you for being here. Whether you're in person or with us online, we are glad to gather with you for this time together. I invite everyone um, to just make themselves at home while we're together and let someone nearby know if you need anything at all. We continue today in this season of Thanksgiving uh, before we rush into the Advent and Christmas season. As part of our practice of gratitude and thanksgiving, today we will consider our financial gifts to God for the funding of this ministry in 2024. Now, if you're a guest with us, please don't be concerned or uncomfortable. You're not expected to make any financial commitment to this ministry. There are people here who have made this ministry a priority in their lives, and they come prepared to make their financial commitments as a part of their worship. If you're not ready to do this or it's not part of your plan today, please uh, know that you are welcome in this space and this time your presence with us is a gift and a blessing. One word about the upcoming season of Advent and Christmas before we continue, I'm going to invite Andy to say a word. Yeah, so we uh, did a, uh, a small group study in the fall uh, around dynamite prayer. And after that study, we had requests for an Advent study also continuing on the subject of prayer. So I did some research and found a book called Behold, and we will be uh, starting the Advent series of that here soon. More details will come shortly. But if you're interested, there's a sign-up sheet on the table up front. You can just put your name, um, an email, and phone number, and if you'll print as nice and neatly as you can so we can read it to make sure we get a hold of you. Um, signing up for interest does not commit you to anything. It just helps us to get the information out to you. So if you're interested at all, please fill that out. Thank you, Andy. Again, uh, we'll have opportunity later in worship. You'll be invited to do that. So thank you again for being here in person or online as we gather in worship. Welcome. As we prepare our hearts to give um, some of the gifts that we've been given back to God, I invite you to rise in body or spirit to join us as we sing Take My Life. Take 
my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from Thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a mine would I withhold. Take my intellect and you. Better. There we go. <laughs> Careful. I bet you can't even know the di- you don't even know the difference, did you? <laughs> All right, I, let's scoot over. Oh my goodness, it's a screw, and Mr. Andy's going to hand that. All right, so I have um, an announcement for these grown-ups out here. Um, how many of you wear neckties? Okay, how many of you have deck t- neckties that you don't want anymore? If you find some neckties that you aren't interested, the kids and I are going to be doing some things over Advent, and one of the activities we're going to do requires some neckties. And I thought, if you're not in, if you don't like them anymore, because it's not hip anymore to wear a, a necktie, you could donate them, whether they're the big fat ones or in the 80s, the little skinny ones, it doesn't matter, we'll take them all. Awesome. Thank you very much. Next next um, Sunday, we will be happy to... Do you wear a necktie? No, oh, okay. Did you know it's my birthday today? I did note that it was your birthday today, so that was my second announcement, is that I think we all need to sing to Mr. Grayson, who is what, 25, 26? <laughs> How old? Only He's only eight. Do you mind if we sing a little happy birthday to Mr. Grayson? All right, Ready?
it gives you the ingredients, right? And there is a recipe in my family that has gone for generations. And it doesn't get passed down until the matriarch of the family passes away. So it's called Aunt Ida's chocolate cake. We don't even know who Aunt Ida is in this. That's not all of the <laughs> Good morning. <clears throat> Today we are reading from the letter to the church in Philippi, chapter 4. I invite you to follow along in your own Bible or Bible app as we read. The writer invites the reader and us to rejoice and celebrate in the life they have with Jesus. As I read, I invite you to listen specifically for the actions and attitudes that lead us into joyful living. I am reading Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 13. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. 
Finally, friends, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. As for the things that you have learned and received and heard and noticed in me, do them, and the God of peace will be with you. I, re will, I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty, and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Um, as we sing this next song, um, I invite you to stand if you're comfortable, sit if you're comfortable, whatever is comfortable for you. Um, and I hope that um, this will become each of our personal prayers to God. I give myself away. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself. 
sing that again. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself. seated. Well, we are just days away from the official Thanksgiving holiday. Many of us are grocery shopping, making our prep list, getting out our favorite recipes, getting the best dishes out. Now, some of us were doing this last week as we celebrated Thanksgiving at the table, Thursday evening dinner church. It was a beautiful evening together. Good food, special music, generous sharing in communities. We gave thanks for who God is and all that we enjoy. A lot of laughter and fun as well. Uh, thank you to everyone who made it happen this week and who makes it happen on a regular basis. Uh, we had a very special time together and uh, just so appreciate everyone who contributes to the table on a regular basis. But for those of us that are hosting or cooking for this week's gatherings with family and friends and others, we're still at it. Of course, turkey is the traditional centerpiece of the Thanksgiving meal. Now, how that came to be is, is really a rather long and convoluted tale that we'll not take time for today. But suffice it to say, I think turkey will grace many of our Thanksgiving tables. Now, for a lot of us, this is the only time each year that we cook like the whole turkey, and sometimes we need a little help, right? Well, I invite you to glean what you can from Gloria, a veteran of one fictional turkey hotline. Gobble, gobble, you've reached the turkey helpline. I'm a 20-year veteran of the turkey helpline. We're an elite group of turkey cooking experts, or turkologists, as we're more commonly known. There are 43 of us, three are men, and our oldest volunteer is 94, and our resident expert on stovepipe ovens. We work a full 12-hour day, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. The job consists of helping people who are in the middle of what we call turkey trauma. Breathe with me. Yeah, it, they're not gonna starve. It's an overcooked bird, not your wedding cake. Lots of newlyweds. You prepped nothing and you need it done in two hours. Okay, let's buckle down. We've got serious thawing work to do. How big is your bathtub? Jason, is the oven turned on? They always turn themselves off, don't they? Yep, you will have to stick your hand fully into the bird to retrieve the neck and organs. Sir, it's totally normal to feel queasy. No, don't take the phone into the bathroom. Okay, all right. I gargle turkey soup to keep the vocal cords loose. It's not a home remedy, I'm just addicted to sodium. In-laws and your parents? Oh, sure, we can do that right now. Heavenly Father. Jennifer, I know spatchcock sounds scary, but it's just the turkey doing a little bit of yoga. Now grab those shears. Oh, Friendsgiving, I love that that's a thing now. 
Where's my invite? <laughs> no, we have not actually met. Mom? Mom, do you need help with a turkey? Okay, well, I've told you you can only call here if you have a turkey problem. Is it sliced or ground? I will see her at Christmas and not a moment before. It's an intense 12 hours, but every year there's that one phone call the Lord uses to bring everything into focus. You have a great Thanksgiving day too, dear. Bye-bye now. You do drive safe. Happy Thanksgiving. You too. Happy Thanksgiving. Turkey Helpline. Hi, Barry, I'm Gloria. First time, huh? Your wife taking the year off, is she? Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Well, I've got you, Barry. We can walk through it together. Not at all, I've got all the time in the world. Have you got butter? <laughs> Thanksgiving is a time to celebrate triumphs and bounty and blessings and surprising encounters. 52 years, my goodness. Yep, just shove the butter right under the skin. It's a time to reflect on the richness God puts in our lives, no matter what circumstances we find ourselves in. Whatever the case, it's a day to stop and give thanks to a God that loves us deeply. That's why it's my favorite time of year. Yep, they probably should say to take the plastic wrap off the turkey before putting it in the oven. Unfortunately, I see takeout in your future, Beth. I'm gonna guess that uh, many of us have our own turkey stories. I remember the first turkey I I cooked. I don't know. Were you a part of it? Yeah. <laughs> he says, I do too. Yeah, that little packet with the extra parts, we found that eventually. You're supposed to take it out before you cook it. Yeah, I know that now. I know that now. Well, while that video was fictionalized, there is a real turkey helpline. Butterball staffs a telephone and online call center to help you with all of your turkey questions. And the most asked question, any guesses? How long to cook it? Good guess. How long to defrost? That's the number one question. How to thaw the bird? And I got a hint for you. If you haven't started yet, you might want to call the turkey helpline. According to Butterball, you should have already started. So you can look them up online. What other favorite things do you like to see and enjoy on Thanksgiving, on your Thanksgiving table? What are some of your favorites? Dressing? Cranberry salad? Green bean casserole, what? Clam dip, that's a new one for me, okay. Persimmon pudding, of course, that came from Sharon. <laughs> and we all have some special recipes that we pull out this time of year. Corn casserole, yeah, that's a good one. But maybe the thing we want most this holiday, and correct me if I'm wrong, is a sense of peace and contentment and joy to be present in our hearts and our lives and our gatherings. And while a thoughtfully prepared meal and the gathering of friends and family can, may, maybe, sometimes, contribute to those things, mostly there's no family recipe good enough to heal all the hurts, smooth all the rough edges, and deliver true contentment and peace and a sense of deep joy. However, Paul, the, the likely writer of the letter to the church in Philippi that Don read for us today, Paul offers a pretty faithful, pretty trustworthy recipe for joy. He suggests for a life that knows joy, peace, and contentment to include the following. Celebration and worship. Exactly what we're doing here when we gather and when we go to God in praise outside of our corporate gatherings. Paul wrote, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. 
rejoicing. That's offering praise and thanksgiving and worship to God. And it's a great place to start for our recipe for joy. He also suggests we include a good measure of gentleness, enough that others see and notice it. Now, not a dash, not a sprinkling. This is more like, like a heaping cup full. Dip it in there and pull it out. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. It takes a lot of gentleness for everyone to get a taste of it. So be generous in how much gentleness you include in your recipe. Remain in prayer. We've been working a whole lot on this as a congregation recently. He writes, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So pray about everything and season that with thanksgiving. Your anxiety, your prayers, your requests to God, all of it, flavor it generously with thanksgiving. Paul also suggests that we only use quality ingredients in our life to cook up some joy. If you're a soup maker, this is the difference between boxed broth and homemade stock, right? Both do the job, but homemade stock from your turkey carcass after Thanksgiving, that makes a special soup, right? Good quality ingredients. Paul puts it this way, finally, friends, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Cooks know this, as do computer programmers, people in relationships, garbage in, garbage out, right? Good stuff in, good stuff out. You have to use quality ingredients if you want a tasty and memorable dish. And you have to put quality things in your own self if you want a quality life to come out. So we're encouraged to fill our mind, our heart, our mouth, our words with good stuff when we're pulling together this recipe for joy. You include all of these things in your life, the writer says, and you'll know peace and you'll have reason to rejoice. Include all of these things and you'll have cooked up a life of joy. Worship, prayer, thanksgiving, keeping our minds and bodies busy with good, wholesome, generous, and worthy endeavors. This recipe brings to us what the best Thanksgiving recipes and meal cannot. Oh, but there's, there's one more thing. Now, Paul doesn't say it outright in the last paragraph of our reading. He, he alludes to it. It's a theme throughout his writing. And Paul assumes that the people who have known him and he's writing to, they'll know what he's talking about. Okay? And if you've ever made a grandmother's or great-grandmother's recipe and it didn't work out quite right, this is one likely reason. There's that one ingredient that she assumed you knew to include because it was so necessary and so basic. Only maybe you didn't know about it, right? Uh, Miss Leanne's family cake recipe is another example. That's Paul here with the final ingredient in his recipe for joy. He's assuming we know what he's talking about. In referencing a financial gift that the church in Philippi had gathered and delivered to him, he writes, I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me but had not opportunity to show it. Not that I'm referring to being in need, for I've learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and of being in need. He says, I can do all things through God who strengthens me. See, Paul has learned the secret ingredient in being content in all things, of knowing a deep joy even in the most difficult times, of trusting God when he has plenty and when he has little. The secret ingredient, the secret sauce Paul is alluding to, the ingredient Paul assumes we know is gratitude. It's giving thanks. He even opened this letter to the church in Philippi with these words. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you. All of Paul's letters, as you spend time in them, you see, are infused with this secret ingredient of gratitude and thanksgiving that contributes to a life of joy. Paul has discovered and passes on to us a beautiful recipe for a joyful, contented life the great hope of this Thanksgiving holiday. It's worship, prayer, wholesome pursuits, and the secret ingredient, gratitude. 
Gratitude, Paul says, is what flavors everything else. Gratitude is what holds the rest of it all together. Right? So if we're thinking about Thanksgiving, gratitude is the salt in the green bean. It's the marshmallows on the sweet potatoes. It's the butter in the turkey baste. It's the whipped topping on the pumpkin pie. Because we know the pumpkin pie is only a vehicle for getting the whipped cream to my mouth. <laughs> it's the cold butter in the pie crust, right? Right? Not that I make pie crust. I did watch a baking show yesterday while I was in the kitchen. All those foods are okay as they are. Beans, pie, all of that. But just okay until we add gratitude and then becomes worthy of a holiday meal, of inviting everyone to come to the table and experience it. You know, most of us eat green beans all year long. It's a staple in the American diet. But when prepared with gratitude, especially for the Thanksgiving table, there is something special about them. That's what gratitude does for a life. Day, days in and days out, family, work, hobbies, all of it's okay, but just okay until we infuse it all with gratitude when we live each day participate in each activity live into each relationship with a sense of gratitude and thanksgiving for the rich blessings those things are then joy settles in and lives deep within us and that's because it's really hard to separate gratitude the practice of thanksgiving and joy Paul repeatedly connects these two in his writing. It's hard to be thankful and express thanks without also knowing joy in our own spirits. And that's what this holiday is really all about. Gratitude and thankfulness. Known in our hearts and shown out in our words and actions. In such quantities and of such quality that everyone gets to see it and enjoy it. And know that joy that Thanksgiving produces. Last week, we talked quite a bit about shouting our praise and thanksgiving, not just with big voices and big worship. If you were here, we did that, big voices, but in ways that spoke to and made a difference in the world in the ways others experienced. We met Mike Epps, a super van of the city of Indianapolis. We learned about all the ways he gives thanks and expresses his gratitude to his hometown. He rehabs houses. He, he leads affordable housing initiatives here. He's, he's a business owner here. He supports the local arts. He does all kinds of things that show out, that show beyond himself how grateful he is for what the city has meant to him. And by that example, we were invited to consider how we might shout out in our actions and especially in our giving, our gratitude for who God is and all that God means to us. You were invited last week in worship and a letter you received this week, if you're on our mailing list, to prayerfully consider your financial gifts to God through this ministry in 2024 so that you could make that commitment as a part of your worship today. On your way in, you received a packet of materials. Looks like this. If you did not, uh, Sharon would be glad to provide you with one. Just turn around and catch her eye. Inside, you'll find a connection card small card that we use every time we gather to record our attendance and share in prayer. Inside it is also an estimate of giving card, and it came with a pen. If you're worshiping with us online, uh, if you're on our mailing list, you'll receive these materials uh, this week in the mail, or you can contact the church office, and they'll be glad to supply those to you. As you find those supplies, uh, just hold on to them for a moment. I want to share with you, while you hold on to that, what some in this congregation, some of you, have said about the joy of knowing Jesus and how your gratitude and generosity has fueled that joy. I asked a number of leaders here at Union Chapel Indy to tell us about why they give and how that giving, that practice of gratitude and thanksgiving, how that translates to joy for them. And here's what some in this faithful community had to say. Dan and Ruth Ann Harp said, we have gotten so much more back than what we have given. When one is in such a loving community as ours, you want this love to reach others. Beautiful, that's why we give. That's what gives them joy, desiring their giving to be love reaching out to others. 
Another said, I give to the church because it's important to me to spread the good news to everyone. When I give, it seems I still have plenty for my bills and giving to others, 10% to the church and 90% for me and others. Now there's somebody that knows their Bible and has a deep trust in God who provides a faithful 10% tied to the church so that everyone has the opportunity to hear the good news of Jesus. And that brings this giver joy. Another said, to see people give back, whether that's talent or money, has always left an impression on me. I feel fortunate to be in a position to be able to help out others and glad to see the joy on people's faces when they receive blessings. That's beautiful. This person is motivated by the way joy carries to others when they express their gratitude through their financial gifts. Brian and Brittany Long shared, we truly believe that because God gives, we give. Many years ago, we started living into the guidance of 2 Corinthians 9, 6 and 7, which says this. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And they continue, and this continues to ring true for us year after year as we consider the time, talents, and treasures that we give to the church. We also see and believe in the amazing things that come from the ministries of this church. It's a blessing to us to be a small part of enabling those ministries and the talented staff and lay people that make them happen. What a powerful witness. Another said, why do I give to Union Chapel Indy and what joy does it bring me? The obvious answers, this person says, are that regular contributions are what God requests. And that our church and its many activities cannot be sustained by goodwill and prayers alone. But I experience much joy in knowing that I'm enabling our ongoing services and outreach. My reward is in the smiles and hugs when we gather, greeting visitors, and welcoming newcomers in Jesus' name. And one more said, there is so much joy in being able to give and to witness the results of giving. We see God's work every day at UCI because this congregation is faithful to love and give. Such beautiful words from beautiful people who find joy in this practice of gratitude and generosity. Thank you to all these people for their generosity and their witness today. Uh, to the power of gratitude, thanksgiving, and giving to bring joy into a life. For our part, Mike and I find few things to be more joyful than being generous. We tithe 10% of our income to the church, and then we give beyond that in a variety of ways so that others can know Jesus and find joy in that relationship, just like we have. We don't find anything as satisfying, as deeply joyful as joining with God in what God is doing in this ministry and in the world. And our giving is just one way we join with God in what God's doing. As you consider your own joyful, generous response to all that God has done, all that God is doing, and all that God will do in you and this ministry through you, I invite you now to find that estimate of giving card in the envelope you have. Take a look at that with me, will you? You'll find it's very simple. There's a place to mark that, you're, that uh, for your financial commitment next year, if you're making one today. And I said earlier, if you're a guest with us, please don't feel any obligation. There are people committed to this ministry who have come prepared to do this today. Uh, so if you are making a commitment uh, to this congregation in this ministry in 2024, you can mark there whether you're stepping up beyond tithing, stepping up to tithing, taking a step toward tithing. Mike and I did that early in our life together, and that was meaningful to each year, take a step closer to tithing. And then you can write down what that commitment is, whether that be per week, you can change that to month, annually, whatever works for your giving. And then just make sure you complete your name, address, and all of your uh, uh, data there so that we can be in touch uh, as needed in that way. We're going to take a few moments now to consider this commitment that we make uh, to God to uh, be a part of God's work in the world in and through this ministry. I'm going to pray in a moment, and then Andy's going to give us some music that we can have a time of personal prayer and reflection, uh, complete our cards, and uh, then just hold on to it. 
I'm going to invite you to bring it forward here in a little bit. I'll give you those additional instructions when we get there. But right now, we're going to pray, invite you to pray, spend a moment considering your giving, and if you feel so led to complete that card, let us go to God in prayer. Thank you, God, for drawing us to you this day and for the joy we know in your presence. Thank you for the countless blessings we enjoy by your gracious and generous hand. And in this season of Thanksgiving, may the practice of gratitude grow in our hearts and spirits so that we might know joy, not just at this Thanksgiving holiday, but more and more often in the rest of our lives, too. As we prepare to offer our gifts to you for ministry and mission in 2024, we pause to recognize your amazing generosity to us and your church and to seek your wisdom, your guidance, your inspiration in living that thanks you out loud in ways that make a difference in lives and in the world. And so we pause with you. Hearts filled with gratitude for the abundant blessings you give us each day. And as we do so, we acknowledge uh, that gratitude and giving is not an obligation, but a joyful act of worship. Helping to know that, help us to know that our giving is an expression of our deep love for you and an important part of the joy we know with you. May our commitments this day be a reflection of your grace and an outward witness of your love, of our love for you, your love for us, this ministry, and the world. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. In a moment, we're going to sing our closing song. And as we sing, you are invited to bring forward, if you have a commitment card, there's a place here to receive it, as well as your connection card, any financial gifts you have for God in this ministry today. There is also a sign-up sheet if you have any interest in that Advent small group. And I hope everyone will come because if for nothing else, I did some baking yesterday. And I added the secret ingredient, gratitude. 
with thanksgiving for all of you and this ministry and who we are together in the world. I bring these gifts to share with you. So come forward if you have things to leave. Uh, have a bite of dessert and we will sing together. I should have said the cake is carrot cake. And in addition to the secret ingredient of gratitude, there really is a secret ingredient in there that if you ask me, I might share with you, but it's one of our family's favorites. Enjoy.
thank you for that team. And as I, I want to say a word, the season of Thanksgiving, trying to say thank you to so many people. I want to say thank you to this crew that leads us in worship every week on Sundays. And there's also another crew you don't very often get to see. Crew upstairs, Kim's one of them, and there may be others sitting down because they rotate. Can we thank them for what they do for us? Thanks. They not only help facilitate worship in this space, they make sure that we're online too. So they, they make the magic happen, and I appreciate them so much. We, we sang a line in that song, it will be my joy to say your will, your way, God. That's what we're doing really when we say, God, here's what I have. Use it for your will, your way. And we know that God will do more with it than we could ever ask or imagine. And so we give God thanks and praise for uh, the invitation God makes to us today and for all that he will do with the gifts and the commitments we've made. Go this week. Be safe. Enjoy your turkeys. Know joy and be joy. Amen. Oh uh-huh.